6.4 memory and storage memory and storage devices can be split up into three distinct groups like shown in this diagram primary memory which is here secondary storage that is here on the left side and offline storage on the right side here so primary memory you already know it no ram and rom lower classes you learned that ram and rom the secondary storage you learned about the hard drive but there's another one solid state drive also ssd so remember both the d is for drive then hard disk for the hd and here ss is solid state like uh, no moving parts in it solid state like transistors and all that circuitry whereas hard disk has a moving part it's a disk rotating disk then offline storage when i tell right read these things you will know what it is huh? dvd and cd and dvd ram blu-ray disk usb memory stick flash memory removable hard drive when you think of it all these are removable no all these things dvd cd dvd ram removable blu-ray disk removable you know what blu-ray disk is it's just like is it a, like cd yeah like cds basically like cds yeah. dvds uh high high capacity lot of storage space and usb memory stick you have you used memory sticks usb memory sticks they are called pen drives yes sir. right and removable hard drive is uh like you can fix it and then remove it it's not permanently fixed like this hard disk these things are permanently fixed inside the hard disk otherwise you can't use it but here only when you want to use it you fix uh, insert them any of these even the removable hard drive is uh, it's like this hard disk drive but you can fix it with a connector and then remove when you finish using that is the story of the three sections of this or uh, memory we will now consider each of the three parts in the diagram so the first one is primary memory random access memory ram the features of random access memory ram are it is volatile temporary memory the contents of the memory are lost when the power to the ram is turned off the contents of the memory are lost when the power to the ram is turned off so imagine you are typing something <clears throat> on the screen right a letter maybe here i'm typing your attendance or something i'm just typing and not saved huh? saving means putting it here now without saving if you switch off this will go off but if you save it here that's a secondary memory the when you switch off the primary memory will go off but the secondary memory will remain so any day and also you must understand that in this in the secondary memory that means the hard disk you can't do any work you have to take it back to the ram the primary memory ram <clears throat> so out of that uh well, the one out of primary memory one is the random access memory volatile what is the meaning of volatile have you ever checked it volatile when you come across a word like that just go to google it's free and you can learn general Sorry. meaning is easily evaporated at normal temperatures you didn't do it in chemistry or physics chemistry yes yeah, sir but 
but i thought like how does it connect to computers ah uh, that is because like when you, when something evaporates what happens we lose it no if there is a yes sir uh, uh, 1 milliliter of water and if it keeps evaporating uh, for 1 hour so we lose that no the water is no more there yes sir same way when you switch off i mean it's temporary like no that water the drop of water on a table or on the floor is temporary no yes. as if you put a even if you put a like if you put some uh, sand or some rock there that is permanent no yes so you can compare the rock to rock rock and the drop of water to ram right so that is why they say it's, it is volatile because it's temporary the contents of the memory are lost when the power to the ram is turned off okay so think of that again and you will never forget keep it remember it repeat repeat it today repeat in your mind today tomorrow day after after some time it becomes permanent in your mind and then from time to time maybe after Three months, you have to think of it. What is this volatile? Or whenever you hear that word, or when you hear the word RAM, you must think of volatile like that. You renew, you refresh the memory in your mind. Then you will remember it permanently for your O level exam and the A level exam and the university. Everywhere this is necessary. Not this particularly. Everything that you learn, everything in the syllabus you learn. is necessary for your future academic matter right then the second one is it is used to store data files data is one thing huh? data you can what is it, what is data like the name address the phone number of if you are entering something the ram until you save it in the data file or in a document file um, you have to keep it in the ram so that's data or the marks of a student or like attendance like what i do here so those things first it's in the ram something new then only to be stored so files data and then files meaning copy of files not not files are really generally stored on the hard disk anything else and the hard disk files can be stored where else can files be stored if you type a letter and save that's a file save yeah. as a file if you sing a song and save that's a audio file so where else can you save word yeah word word no word is not a storage place it means word is a package it's a software package where you can type something where it will help you to do some word processing type and all that but storing you store as a file give a name and store it on the hard disk generally where else can you store them save those files uh, memory chips memory sticks yeah. pen drive pen drive yeah. then then what uh, is removable something removable pen drive is removable no offline storage hard, hard drive is not removable and that's what what i said earlier this document that you type is saved on the hard disk hard disk that is in the uh secondary memory now we are talking about we are in the ram we are type, typing something we have some data and you save it uh, as a file on the hard disk pen drive okay i'll tell you cd dvd also possible right external oh. hard disk those are all secondary and uh, offline storage means storage means saving files so files can be program files audio files text files image files video files that's all okay all those are kinds of files but the simplest form of file is text file 
Just plain text. Okay. Then, uh, then afterwards you get images and all that. So those are picture files, image files. Then you have audio files. Where you have the sound also. Then finally, video files. Anything else? Those are all. Those are the files. So those can be stored on the hard disk or where else? Now we were, Normal files. We were discussing a story. Uh, CDs, DVDs. CD, DVDs, external pen, drive. pen drives. Okay. So until then, the, that file is in the memory, in the RAM, right? We are talking about RAM now. And also, thirdly, part of the operating system that are currently in use. Part of the operating system that is currently in use. So the, that says, now see, if you don't know anything about it, let's say, we can learn something from this. This says part of the operating system that is currently in use. If you think of the English meaning of that, that means the full thing is not there, isn't it? Part of the operating system that is currently in use. So we have to assume that is learning. We have to assume, okay, right? Then only the part that is being used for the moment is in the RAM now. The other part is the balance is in the on the hard disk. So that this there, right? The program file. These files are generally the programs, right? If it is Word, Word is a program. MS Word is a program which enables you to type. So you have data, programs, and the operating system part of the operating system that is being used and some other quality property it can be written to or read from and the contents of the memory can be changed that is easy no that you know it no not like rom so let's again look at the, the three points first point is it's volatile second point is it has these three things data file via programs and the operating system thirdly it can be written to or read from so that means you can change it you can erase it you can write something you can erase it you can type again you can erase again like that then we go to in general the larger the size of ram the faster the computer will operate so if the ram is large meaning capacity like right? The MBs and GBs and all that. If it has more capacity, the computer can run fast. In reality, the RAM never runs out of memory. That's interesting, isn't it? It continues to operate, yes. but, but just gets slower and slower. All right? Why? As the RAM becomes full, now we say, you know, is your computer slow? And then if you say yes, ah, maybe. Not enough RAM, isn't it? Your phone gets stuck sometimes. You have to delete. You have to delete images and other apps that are not used. Then your phone becomes fast again. Otherwise, slow or sometimes it cannot open this, that, and all that. So when the RAM is large, it has a lot of space, storage space. It can operate fast because the otherwise, what happens is. As the RAM becomes full, the processor has to continually access the hard disk drive to overwrite old data on RAM with new data. That's a long sentence. You have to take it part by part. Take this part, overwrite old data on RAM. Okay? We'll take a um, diagram and see. It doesn't give. I will. We will have our own diagram. We'll go somewhere down here. And this is, let's say this is, uh, I'll put a color to it. Colors are not there. I'll have to maximize this. Here's a color. I'll put this color here yellow. 
that is RAM. This is um, hard disk. So what happens is when this is getting full, there is you erase part of it. You erase part of it, like like what happens in your phone. Has it happened? Otherwise, there's no point in my just telling something that you don't know. Has it happened in your phone? When it becomes slow, you when you delete some images, videos, and all that, then it's okay. Has it happened? Yes. Yeah, ah, okay. Then you understand that. So here, this yellow part, which is a RAM, then when it becomes full, it becomes slow. Why? As the RAM becomes full, the processor has to continually access the hard disk. So the processor is. Let's. I'll put the processor here. in uh, red right. so the processor has to access the hard disk why to overwrite old data on ram with new data so we need some space here on the yellow one but it's full so you erase part of it but when you erase it has to it has to be somewhere no that part that part will be put on the hard disk temporarily. Temporarily, it is put to the hard disk and makes space here. So that continually has to continually access the hard disk drive to overwrite old data on RAM with new data. What is coming new, we have to use. So the old data is put on the hard disk and erased on the RAM. By increasing the RAM size, the number of times this access operation is carried out is reduced, making the computer run faster. That is the meaning. This uh, cleaning up, if we call this a cleaning up process, that is reduced. Otherwise, you have to access, the, the CPU has to access this and then put it here, then make way for the new data. That takes time, that is why it becomes slow. Is that clear? Yes. Right. RAM is much faster to write to or read, read from. Oh, sorry, RAM is much faster to write to or read from than other types of memory. But its main drawback is its volatility. Is that clear? RAM is much faster to write. That it's much 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 faster than the hard disk because the hard disk has movable parts it has to rotate the disk read write head it's called read write head for reading as well as writing as a head that has to move to the correct place where the data is stored because of that it is slow sometimes one revolution sometimes two three revolutions five six depending on how the file is stored where the data is stored, how it is distributed. So RAM, there is nothing like that. No moving parts, just electronic things. And it's so fast, very fast. RAM is much faster to write to or read from. Reading is also same. Hard disk, when you go to read, you have to wait till the, uh, the data area comes near the um, read write head. The read write head has to move where that data is stored. So reading also in the same manner, hard disk is slower, RAM is faster. But what is the problem with the RAM? It's volatility. If it's not volatile, then we don't need hard disk. No? Isn't it? Did you ever thought of it? If the RAM is permanent, if it's not volatile, then why do you need a hard disk to store all those things? We can store everything in the RAM. No? You switch off and put it on again. All those things will be there in the RAM. Okay. But that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Okay. That's why we need a hard disk and other secondary storage devices. Buffers were introduced in Chapter 4. So new thing coming. Buffers were introduced in Chapter 4. These often use RAM since they need to be 
a fast memory and the data only needs to be held temporarily so only temporarily for certain thing you have to keep like imagine that you are you are cooking or you are baking a cake or something i'm not an expert but i know i uh, at home things are done so you keep something you know some flour and sugar and butter and those things you mix on a side you can see some yeast or baking powder i don't know what so maybe not cake some uh, pastry or uh, some buns or bread the yeast is in a separate place it's doing some process there so that is taken temporarily once you use that after that it's gone so same way imagine like you want to you want to print something the document is about 200 pages so imagine if the computer is going to wait till uh, the whole 200 pages are finished to do some other work that's a waste of time waste of resources so what it does is take the memory part of the memory and put it there maybe one page is being printed now but that 199 other pages kept in that memory and the cpu starts doing something else so that temporary storage thing is called buffer okay so it has to be fast that's why it's using ram as outlined earlier buffers allow the processor to do other tasks while slower peripherals while slower peripheral devices send data to and receive data from the computer the speed of the cpu is in gigabytes right let's say 3 gigabytes sorry mistake 3 gigahertz gigahertz 2 gigahertz so 3 or 2.5 gigahertz that means uh, 3 billion if it is 3 gigahertz that means 3 billion instructions per second see how fast it is but the printing when you when the cpu is trying to send data to print on a printer that prints about one page in five seconds about five seconds it takes i'm just giving an example that's not a rule so how slow it is very 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 slow extremely slow so only to compensate for that without waiting till, till the printer finishes the job the computer uses a buffer that is how the processor can do many things at the same time like multitasking there are currently two types of ram technology dynamic ram which is called dram for short and static ram which is called sram dynamic ram it's a the both are chips huh? here is an example here a picture if you open up a computer not the laptops don't go to open laptops uh, if you have a desktop computer what is a desktop computer have you seen where have you seen you have not seen desktop computers i have seen sir where you have seen them but not on the desk they are underneath the desk where under the desk on the table in the lab school lab those are called desktop computers or mini towers not laptop laptop is supposed to be you keep it on your lap and do even when you travel so on your bed or any other place where there's no table even but this is tabletop or desktop it's called desktop so in those if you open up you will see these ram chips these are called ram chips uh, 
um, it consists of a number of transistors and capacitors. Each of these parts is tiny since a single RAM chip will contain millions of transistors and capacitors. So this has millions of transistors and capacitors. Generally, if you take a transistor which is available in the electronics industry, if you just take one transistor that will be about this size. Can you see the black thing that I'm circling here, outlining here with the cursor? Something like that yes. size. So that is not meant what is meant here. Those are electronically etched or the circuit is created with millions of uh, transistors and capacitors. So the function of each part is capacitor is this holds the bits of information, zero or one. You do you know anything about a capacitor or transistor? No, sir. No. Uh, then can you do after the school, after the class, go to Google and use these two words and learn a little bit. You don't need to memorize and you know remember the things, but just read and get an idea about these. That is important, okay? So this holds the bits of information zero or one. Then you understand if you know how the capacitor works, like it, it is charging and then discharging. They have, you know, what? Have you seen those mosquito eliminator rackets? Yeah. yeah. Swing and then the mosquito gets yeah. caught. You get a spark, right? You get a spark, electric spark, and then it dies. That is because of the capacitors or charge. That is charged, the electrical charge. So transistor, so then if you know how the capacitor works, then you know how to store zero or one, right? And you will never forget. Transistor also, this acts like a switch. It allows the chip control circuitry to read the capacitor or change the capacitor's value. So that also if you learn, then it's good. Excuse me. That this type of RAM needs to be constantly refreshed. That is, the capacitor needs to be recharged every 15 microseconds very fast very short period microseconds otherwise it would lose its value what happens when we use the mosquito eliminator for a long time it won't do the job the charge is gone discharged so then what do we do we charge again we put it into the charger and charge. But that doesn't mean that you are charging a capacitor there. I'm just giving an example. Individual capacitors also like that. You have to charge and uh, charge. It will discharge on its own. But we have to charge, recharge. It's called recharge. That's why it says uh, it has to be recharged every 15 microseconds. Otherwise, it would lose its value. So we mean if there's a value, say one, value of one you by giving a certain charge electrostatic uh, or some charge there then it's one but if you if it will remain for it will remain for 15 microseconds the 16th microsecond if you don't charge again it will be zero it will go off so what you do you keep charging okay you're one you're one you're one you're one <laughs> saying like, like that, then it remains like that one. If it wasn't refreshed, the capacitor's charge would leak away very quickly, leaving every capacitor with the value zero. That is what I said earlier. DRAMs have a number of advantages over SRAMs. So here, now itself, you have to put it to your mind that DRAMs have number of advantages. 
Okay, so it must be better. In your mind, you have to form these opinions. Then when you learn, it's easy. They are much less expensive to manufacture than SRAM. So now it's a build up your uh, information bank. DRAM is cheaper than SRAM. First of all, yeah, the advantages. We, we learned that these are the other advantages. So I have a number of advantages over SRAM. So take this D, the first letter D, and think of it as ed, advantages, ed RAMs, right? advantages. They are much less expensive to manufacture than SRAM. They consume less power than SRAM. Is it an advantage? Consuming less power? Yes. Yes. How come? What will happen? What is the result of that? Your the battery won't get damaged. Not exactly. Only talking about uh, power. They consume less power. The charge won't go. Now think of your electricity bill. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to pay more, no? Yeah, so that is also. If they less, yeah, less power, then your bill is low. Right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this is negligible. I mean, very little, but yet, how many chips, how many chi and how many hours to use it? So every 15 seconds also you have to, or if, if 15 uh, microseconds. So because of that, if it consumes less, there is, then it becomes a considerable amount. They have a higher storage capacity than SRAM. About consuming less power, see the laptop. The screen on the laptop consumes much less than a screen on the like screen of a desktop computer, the old, old type. Not now. Now you get the desktop also having the, the LCD and uh, LED screens. But those days, they were like the old TV. Now, even the TVs also, you have flat screen, the LEDs, the LCD, and all that. But can you remember olden day TV sets, big ones? That has a, the tube inside, cathode ray tube, CRT. So it consumes a lot of power, a lot of power. The third one here is they have a higher storage capacity than SRAM. So three things, what are the three advantages? One is less expensive, but more capacity. I'm jumping to the third one because it's relevant, no? Cheap, but more capacity. Generally, when it is expensive, we expect that, no? High capacity and all that, that's why it's expensive. But here, the other way around. Yes. Sir. In the middle in the middle they consume less power than SRAM. So do you think you can remember if a question comes like what are the so first of all if you are given a chance to use DRAMs and SRAM or SRAMs to manufacture something or design something. Which one will you choose? So you will write DRAM, so because then why? Because why? Then the advantage. Less expensive. That's right. Yeah, yeah, those three things. So you have to remember, and uh, it's easy if you think like that and remember. Answering the exam is simple. Then static RAM. A big difference between SRAM and DRAM is that this type of memory doesn't need to be constantly refreshed. There you are. Different technology, isn't it? It doesn't need to be constantly refreshed. It makes use of flip-flops which hold each 
bit of memory. That's the electronic term, flip flop. But that also, if you go to the Google and see the general meaning and the computer meaning, it's the electronic thing, flip flop, which hold each bit of memory. So for each bit, there's a flip flop. It's a gate, like something like a gate in the logic gate. SRAM is much faster than DRAM. Now we have to again check back with the advantages of DRAM. It didn't say anything about the speed, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, it waited without <laughs> saying that it's slow. <laughs> but now <laughs> we discovered it is slower because SRAM is much faster than DRAM when it comes to data access. Right? So that also you have to store it in your mind in a very safe place. Typically, access time for SRAM is 25 nanoseconds. Now, don't get confused or don't think, oh my God, 25 nanoseconds, how am I going to remember? 25 nanoseconds and for DRAM is 60 nanoseconds. So you can have a comparison, like it's double, no? double the speed of DRAM. Access time. Access time is 25 nanoseconds and for DRAM is 60 nanoseconds. It's not the speed. If it's the speed, then DRAM is faster, no? 60 is faster than 25. No? But here the access time means how long it takes to access. So SRAM takes a shorter time, 25, whereas DRAM takes double the time. So it's slow. All right. So SRAM is much faster than DRAM when it comes to data access. Typically, access time for SRAM is 25 nanoseconds. And for DRAM is 60 nanoseconds. DRAM is the most common type of RAM used in computers. But where absolute speed is essential, then SRAM is the preferred technology. For example, the processor's memory cache is the high speed portion of the memory. It is effective because most programs access the same data or instructions many times. By keeping as much of this information as possible in SRAM, the computer avoids having to access the slower DRAM. So you can't say that this RAM is made of SRAM, the other RAM is made of DRAM. No, it's a mix. No? Part of the part that has to work very fast, SRAM is used because it's faster. Uh, the the by keeping as much of this information as possible in SRAM because the data that is to be used over and over again frequently and very regularly. So it's good to have it in the SRAM. The computer avoids having to access the slower DRAM. Read only. So cache is generally said fast. It makes it fast, the cache. So cache is some part of RAM like you know it's in the processor uh, it's a faster one faster than data read now comes to read only memory this is primary secondary or offline read only hmm? Nothing to think, we learned that today. Secondary? No, no, no. No. Primary is Ram and Rock. Oh, yes. Yeah, primary is Ram and Rock. So remember this like a picture. Take a picture from your memory phone right memory phone camera primary ram rom okay okay in the photo <laughs> yeah actually now another exercise useful exercise you can do is look at this for five seconds or ten seconds take it out of the screen and try to draw it See whether you can even remember the colors. 
that way you are keeping you are fixing it in your brain or memory um yeah now we came here read only memory they are non volatile permanent memories the contents of the memory remain even when the power to the rom is turned off if you remember well ram the first point was volatile straw like that no there were other things right? so this is first one is the opposite of that non volatile they are often used to store the start up instructions when the computer is first switched on for example rom might store the basic input output system bios basic input output system basic b input i output o system is basic input output system that is that is what you call b bio bios they are often used to store the startup instructions when the computer is first switched on uh now tell me now if the rom has bios or the basic input output system what does the rom under the ram have what does the ram have let's see the memory we learned it about uh 15 minutes ago i now understand the question if rom rom has the bios what is in the rom bios what is in the ram there were three things we discussed uh it's less expensive no 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 those are advantages of the ram now i'm talking about the two things in the primary memory ram and rom uh we said there were two three things in the ram when the ram is working when the computer is working ram has three things as contents rom it is saying here rom has the bios the basic input output system is there in the rom and it and the first point is non volatile even if you switch off this will not go off the bios and the boot up instruction how to load the operating system those things will not erase so what do you have in the ram see whether files files is one years better to say program data data and uh, part of some part of something we are saying the okay. operating system operating system very good so now if you repeat like that you will remember otherwise you will forget it if you remember again or repeat means refreshing so from the lesson i am telling you you have to refresh your memory from time to time otherwise it will vanish the data or contents of a rom chip can only be read they cannot be changed so that is also we learned that the ram can be read to or written sorry written to or read from you can read from the ram you can write to ram so there the rom the data or contents of rom chip can only be read they cannot be changed they cannot be changed application where do we is it we will now consider an application other than a computer where both ram and rom chips are used chip is ic another name for chip is ic 
integrated circuit. Why the word chip is used is because this circuitry, the whole circuit after designing the circuit, is etched onto a or printed onto a very tiny chip of silicon. You know the silicon thing, semiconductor, that is, take a chip like that. Very tiny and thin chip, you know, <laughs> like potato chips. How do you make potato chips? Cut very slice, uh, thin slices. No, same way the the what silicon. Take a silicon block of silicon, and then take. Oh, of course, you can't do with a knife like this, like sharpening a pencil or cutting a mango. No, they that is done with robotics. Very nano nanotechnology. Very tiny. All right, so that is why the word chip is used. A remote controlled toy car has a circuitry which contains both RAM and ROM chips. So think of a, now we have to picture, you have to think of a remote controlled toy car. The remote control is a handheld device. You agree? Is there anything that you don't know? You are not familiar, you have to tell me. Then I will stop and explain that. So the remote control is a handheld device. Like, are you know remote control of the TV also? Something like that. We will consider the function of each type of memory independently. The ROM. Stores the factory settings such as remote control fre frequencies. Stores the startup routines when when the toy car is first switched on. Just like the you can compare, you can just uh, like you know keep it on your mind comparing the compute operation. So stores the factory settings such as remote control frequencies. And you think of the computer, computer also, the ROM has the boot up sequence like, or boot up instruction because it's permanent. No? The manufacturer has put it there. Second part is stores the startup in routines when the toy is first switched on. Frequencies, what? Going back to the first point, remote control frequencies. On the frequencies only, the signals go. Right? Now you have FM, right? 90 point one hundred and three hundred and four like that that's a frequency the value is that so that is stored which frequency is used for this toy car to communicate with the remote control uh, stores the factory settings such as remote control frequencies stores the startup protein so same way like in the computer it also is a startup protein like loading the operating system when the toy car is first switched on, as you switch on the toy car, first thing is that the startup operation. Stores the, the third one, stores the set routines, for example, how the buttons on the handheld device control turning left, acceleration, stopping, and so on. So the set routines, like when you press this button, this should happen. When you press the other button, that should happen like that. That's also the set the routines, how it is. That is also stored in ROM because you can't change it. You should not change it. Otherwise, it will not work, the toy car. Then the RAM part of it. The user may wish to program in their own routines. These new instructions would be stored in the RAM chip. So the if the user, the player, the child wants to change certain routine, he should be able to do that. If he's not satisfied the way it is going now, he can change the mode or whatever, what is available. Then that has to be in the RAM, no? because ROM you can't change. Also the second point in the RAM is the RAM chip will store the data or the instructions received from the remote control unit. So if you say forward, that's the kind of instruction. 
and then how much, you know, you have to go fast or left or right or whatever. Uh, that is data. Hmm? Activity 6.4. Describe how ROM and RAM chips could be used in the following devices. Microwave oven, a refrigerator, a remote control model aeroplane. The movement of the aeroplane is controlled by a handheld device. So try to do that also. Search and find the answers. That is self-study. And we will never forget what you learn that way. So there is no time to go to the other one, no 6.4.2. We will do it next time, hopefully. I don't know the date. We will continue on this date. Unless if I get another class and a private class, I'm not having only two. If I get something like that, I will adjust. Otherwise, so next one is 13. August 13th. Same time. Think of any questions to ask before we finish the lesson. Now, what is 1630? We have one and a half hours last time. Just one hour. They told that they had until 4.15. Sorry? Until 4.15. Until 4.15. Ah, yeah. oh, you were not there also, no? Okay, so one is, uh, this is enough, no? One hour. Okay. Three, two, four, right? And we'll be doing 6.4.2. Right, and then uh, I will just take your attendance. Right, so thank you very much, and uh, hope you will have a good week. Right, if you don't have anything, now next time keep uh, ready, be ready next time to ask me questions either before or during the break. Now there's one student, we don't have to break up, there's no limit. Only more than one student only, that 40 minutes limit comes in. Okay, okay. so only one student today. Yeah. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, sir. See you, yeah. See you next time. Bye. Bye, sir.